Thanks to the supporters and channel member Liam Cooney. Oh, boys and girls, we did go on a run of form and we are top of the league now. And today we're away from home against our oldest rivals, good old Chalfo, who've been with us right from season one and are also in a promotion race with us. They're probably going to act as spoilers, aren't they? Hello and welcome to part 55 of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Talking of spoilers, um, if you don't already follow me on TikTok, you should because I'm spoiling the Euros every single day before the matches happen over on TikTok. I'm Lelouja over there as well. Um, go follow me over there. It's a lot of fun. Euros results, courtesy of Football Manager, before they happen each and every day. But that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is, uh, is the fact that we're suddenly very good. Look at that form we've been in. Look at it. Yeah, there was a few little wobbles along the way, but on the whole, absolutely stunning form, including six consecutive wins, which leave us top of the league, albeit level on points with Hungerford, and they do have a game in hand. So we're by no means in control of this title race just yet. We've still got quite a lot of football to play, and we still go away from home to Hungerford on the last day of the season. So we are we still have an awful lot to do. But if we can keep this run of form going, you never know. You can but dream, boys and girls. There has been a little bit of uh, transfer shenanigans going on as well, um, including a new left back. We definitely needed one. The left back we had was uh, was a, a drunken wally, basically. Um, so we've got Jack Machiavelli, who's in. He's quite good. Three and a half stars of current ability, much better than McDowell. And doesn't go clubbing the night before training. Um, he's only played three matches so far, but already has two assists and a 7.2 average rating. I think that might be as many assists. It's not quite as many assists as McDowell has had, but it's still a significant improvement. We've also loaned out a couple more of the fringe boys. Andrew Edwards and Harvey Brown have both gone out on loan. And we did recall Lee Alderson from his loan. Uh, so he's back at the club albeit now wanting to go out on loan again because he's still not actually playing regularly for us. Really starting to regret giving him that expensive one-year contract back in the summer. So uh, squad depth is fine. We're not going to read too much into those question marks. We've won six on the bounce. And fingers crossed, we can make that seven against our old rivals, Chalfo, who, as you can see, are only... only they're 10 points behind us. But they are up in the playoffs. And if we do end up bottling it against Hungerford, which I still think is quite likely, they're a team we could end up facing in the playoffs when we get round to them. But how have we done this, boys and girls? These three players. Sam Camper is joint top scorer. Craig Laycock, second, uh, well, third behind those two. Uh, Laycock and Camper are the two highest rated players in the division. Tom Best, 11 assists this season. He's not quite weighing in with as many goals as he used to when he played more attacking. And you could argue we're not getting the best out of Best. But I think still having a player who's doing almost a goal contribution every, every match and still averaging well over a seven, I think downgrading him slightly is a small price to play, pay to be able to get these two in playing the way they are. So not 18 goals in the league from Camber, who has signed a new contract extension for next season, and Craig Laycock, 17 goals in the league, and we very much try and sign him permanently, but may struggle. I mean, we, very, we, we occasionally go in and say, can we have him for free, please? And they say, no, the price is going up and up and up. But you never know, is he out of contract with them in the summer? He is. So we will very much be trying to sign him permanently in the summer. But enough of all that. Let's go and play Chalfo. And this is the team. It's Gilbert in goal. A back four of Machiavelli, Larson, uh, Young and O'Doy. Kakit, O'Sullivan, Alderson and Best in midfield. And then Camper and Laycock up front. Alderson has to play today because Mingi is suspended for this one. Alderson still, after all this time training to play central midfield... Still unconvincing in the position, despite being a natural defensive midfielder. This is the kind of thing in Football Manager that just doesn't make any sense and needs fixing, I think, as part of FM25. Because if he's a natural player there, I get he's maybe more of a centre-back than a defensive midfielder. But if he's actually natural in that role, he should be able to play five yards further up the pitch. It's not that different a role that we're asking him to do. We're asking him to be a ball-winning midfielder on defend. And then he'll get he'll get penalised in the match engine for the fact that he's uh, unconvincing in that position as well. So 
he won't be able to perform to his best until he becomes more familiar with a position that he should already just be able to play. It's the same as the nonsense you get when you've got left wingers who can't play left midfield or right backs who can't play left back. And I know, I know, you know, you have to do everything backwards if you move from the left to the right. That's probably the most complicated of all of them. But still, you know how to play fullback. You know how to play fullback. If you're a natural right back, you should at least be an accomplished left back. Surely. Or... Oh. Rant over. Hopefully, Alderson has a really good game today and proves me wrong. That'd be that'd be jolly nice. Uh, but it's pouring down with rain here in Chalfo, so we uh, we'd quite like to just get the ball out to our wide players, whip some crosses in, and score some goals like that. But we'd like to do it the other way. Oh, it's been disallowed. Excellent. We'd like to do it whilst staying on side. That uh, they are briefly up to third in the league as well, based on this one point. Hungerford, I presume, are playing. Hungerford are away against Tame. So there's quite a few big games going on in the top half of the table today. And we don't seem to have started very well. And um, of course, we are going to be uh, hit by the dreaded, you're on a winning run, the RNG is going to change thing. Because I ha I am recording this episode the day after I, I did the in-betweeny bits. So that six match and beaten run, that doesn't count. That was yesterday. This is all new. Um, but, and Chalfo now have broken through and they are looking pretty uh, pretty good at the moment. We've not had any kind of a look in. This is how much we're missing Mingy, clearly. He's a key player in midfield. This is all the Lee Alderson effect. We're, uh, we're barely asserting ourselves on the game at all. And Hungerford, I guess, have taken the lead in their game. They have. This, this, see, this becomes problematic for the title race. As it stands right now, we're three points behind them and they have a game in hand. It, I mean, we've clawed back, what, an eight, nine point gap once. We're not going to be able to do it a second time. But if if results end as they do, as they are currently, and then they win their game in hand, we're going to be six points behind them with, uh, yeah, it's going to be troublesome. Oh, look at Laycock. Where was the finish though? I mean, he turned those defenders inside and out. But then rather than running into all the space that he's created for himself... He just has a shot from miles out on his weak foot. What's he thinking there? He did everything right and then just got afraid. He was scared. I, d I don't understand. There's no logic behind what we've just seen. Right, we are going to... You know what we're going to do? In order to try and get the best out of everybody, we're going to do that. It's not ideal for O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan is the reverse Alderson. He can't play as defensive midfielder, so I guess we leave him there. Alderson drops back like that, and this gets Tom Best for one night only back in his inside forward position as we go attacking and try and uh, drag ourselves back into this football match because we have we have not looked at the races so far today, and hopefully this allows us to... Uh, to at least grab ourselves a point. We need a point. We've won six in a row. We can't just come to one of our big rivals and just lose. Just like just lose without even really trying. It would be very upsetting if that's how this turned out. Right, O'Sullivan to O'Doy at right back. And there is Tom Best enjoying being the inside forward again. It's one of the first times this season he's had the pleasure of playing in this role. And now Machiavelli overlapping. On the left-hand side, he's done really, really well. Drives it across Laycock. Couldn't get there ahead of the defender, but this is much better from us. And Alderson just heads it. Just heads it to nobody. And, uh, yeah, he definitely is looking like the weak link, even back in a position that he's supposedly natural in. He's, I think we've just broken that boy. And Gilbert doing very well with the deflection on the ball there. Does very well to collect that with a striker lurking. Look at the match stats. Look at the XG. I am frustration currently. Because we've we've made a little bit of a tweak and now we're officially the better team who's created the better chances. They've had one shot on target and scored it. Right, we have a shot, a, a free kick, a shot from the edge of the area. It is Camper and he 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 hassles hassles the netting. But that's not really how you get points in a football match, I don't think. And this puts Chalfo up to only seven points behind this and very much gets them gets them into this mix. Best playing it all the way back to Gilbert. And now it's with O'Doy. O'Doy finds Camper. Best has run beyond him. We don't see a lot of this anymore, but Best cutting inside. Lovely ball from Best. And Kakit was there. 
And I think that's hit the crossbar. Goodness me, we're creating some chances. Right, Kakit is shattered. McDowell can come on and play on the left. He is able to play all the way up this left-hand side. So McDowell comes on on the left-hand side. Laycock not having a very nice day. So I think we're going to bring on Tweedy, get best up front. Tweedy can play there as a winger as well. And we go full wingers and hope that best playing as centre forward, maybe. I don't know. We need something. Somebody do something. Even an equaliser at this point. An equaliser is fine. This is just this is just a, an incredible amount of frustration in this match today. They've got him behind us again here, but Gilbert once again is equal to it and uh, just relatively comfortably grabs a hold of the ball. We've got 15 minutes left. Big ball forward looking for Camper. Um, it's actually gone to Tweedy and Tweedy loses out on his header and Best is chasing around all over the shop. Probably less effective at centre forward. We've played him there a few times this season. It's not quite as impactful. And that's what happens when you throw all your men forward, I guess. They've got a free scoring striker as well. 17 goals for the season for him. And this is, this is a, oh, this has been an annoying match. Two shots on target. They've scored them both. Gilbert is having a, a Bosworth performance, even though he looked comfortable every time we saw him in a highlight, apart from when he was conceding goals. We'll bring Brown on, but I mean, it's too late. Nothing's, nothing's happening now. We are going to berate. Did we already berate? I want to berate again. I love berating. This is just, I don't, I mean, there's no explanation. Sometimes football manager just decides to get you, especially, <laughs> especially at this level, because consist consistency is such a challenge. The fact that we'd won six in a row was remarkable for a team playing in tier seven, because it just doesn't happen. So I guess we were always due an FMing, and that's what we've had today because we've created the better of the chances. We've looked better in all of the highlights, but they've had the ball in the back of our net three times, and we just haven't really looked like scoring. We had that one time where we hit the crossbar, and then we had that Laycock chance that he absolutely spooned. I mean, even saying we've had the better of the match now is probably a little bit ambitious. Chalfo have just done us today. Our old rivals, we need Mingy back. He's an absolutely crucial player for us. I hope it's only a one-match suspension. So we can get him back in for this second match and get back to winning ways because the last thing we need after such good work getting ourselves actually into the title race, the last thing we need is to see Hungerford get away from us again. I really hope they don't play their game in hand before we get to play again. Um, we've got a triple threat against Hayes and Yedding. Oh, they do play midweek. Right, we need Hampton to do us a big favour here or else we're going to go into the next match six points behind and that wasn't the plan. Right, Wayne Hughes is being sent to Hampton. Hopefully not to not to play for them against Hungerford. That would be a nightmare. Um, but he's gone in and uh, freeing up a little bit more money for us. Got in as the backup. I think we're okay. We've got some positives and some negatives. Positive, Hungerford did drop points against Hampton. Um, did our guy play for them? Let's have a look. I imagine he probably didn't. Uh, he didn't. He did sit on the bench for them, though. So good work to him. Uh, so we are only four points behind them still going into this match. The bad news is Mingy is still suspended. And uh, it is the second match of a two-match suspension just for accumulating too many yellow cards. He gets booked pretty much every other match. Um, I'm not going to go with Alderson again. It didn't work in the last game. So we're moving Larson forward from centre-back because he is accomplished in central midfield. So Larson moves forward. Daredevils are going to come in and play alongside Young at centre-back. And hopefully this can be uh, this can be a little bit more effective. Cross your fingers, everybody. We need to get back to winning ways here. I can't believe Mingy, who was a player we brought in last year when we were not, not nearly as good a team last year. Um, the Andrew Edwards situation is a perfect example of that. He played like 35 games for us last year. Barely got a look in and got loaded, a look in and got loaned out this year. Um, so we are a much better team. But Mingy wasn't a regular starter for us last season, uh, but has really established himself as a key player this year after probably controversially being given a new contract in the summer. But well, goodness me, do we need him? And we're 1 0 down again here. Is he really? I can't believe one man can make this much difference. But we have now, with that one man, we have 
kind of rearranged the whole team and that was Daredevil, I think, missing out on the header who hasn't played a lot of football for us this year and moving Larson out of the defence might not be the smartest move I've ever done. We're going to demand more. Hayes and Yedding all the way down in 10th place. Ungerford are playing Buckland, but uh, we can't drop more points. We're demanding more. We're going to go attacking. Right, we've got a corner. Best. With the in-swinger, looking for the far post. Young is there. And Leo Young has done that so many times this season. Those spectacles have no impact on his ability to lurk at a corner. Nine goals for him now this season. They've all looked pretty much exactly like that one. He is dominant in the air with those spectacles. And it's back to 1-1. One, one, and I'm tempted to leave us on an attacking instruction because a draw really isn't good enough for us today. Ungerford are currently drawing. So if we can find a way to win this match... We do start to close that gap on them a little bit, assuming they don't score in the next hour of football that they've presumably still got to play. But at least we're not going in behind at half time. I don't know what's gone on with our front two. They've not really turned up in this entire episode yet, have they? After speaking so highly of them, maybe that was the problem. I spoke too highly of them. Uh, let's offer some encouragement and come on, somebody do something. Mingy's back soon. He'll be, you, you remember Mingy, you love him. He's back in the next match. Right, O'Doy's picked up an injury. Um, so we can bring Brown on for him. That's not a huge loss. It's pretty interchangeable how I use them anyway. So I'm not overly worried. If anyone was going to get injured, he's probably the one. Um, but can we, can we do something? We're offering more encouragement. And uh, someone said in the comments over there that I don't use these buttons enough. I don't think they really do anything, but. I'm, I'm making a big deal of pressing them today so you can see me pressing them. Laycock is in! And it's all thanks to pressing that button. What a genius I am. And Laycock grabs himself a goal. He's 20th of the season to put us ahead. We will now drop back to our positive mentality. Now we've done the business. This is good work in midfield for O'Sullivan. And then Camper just slots it into the path of Laycock. And it is a very tidy finish from him. Where was that finishing in the last match when he did all that good work? And then absolutely screwed the shot wide. So he can do composure. And now they're on the attacking. But Machiavelli, lovely work from him. And now Camper, once again, back to goal. Proper target man stuff. And it's with Daredevil. And now O'Sullivan and Laycock and Kakit on the left-hand side. Laycock trying to return the favour with Camper. But Camper just holding the ball up again. Playing it out to Machiavelli, who's on the overlap. Does get there in time for the cross. It's, I mean, he's had to hit it first time whilst the ball was bouncing and it didn't really get anywhere. But we are continuing with this highlight. So maybe something is about to happen. Larson plays it into Camper, who gets there ahead of the keeper. Has he managed to stay on side? There's no flag. And that is, I mean, that's proper non league stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Just lump it forward from the centre back. And, uh, or oh, I guess he's playing in midfield today. Lump it forward. I, he's going to argue that's a pass and a beautifully placed run in behind the defenders and camper. That is bread and butter for him. And it's 3-1. And now we are going to offer some praise. Once again, using the lovely buttons, Kev's become a man manager. Right. What are we going to do? Kakit's going to come off and we're going to bring on McDowell. And then we're going to leave alone for a minute. We don't really have any, any attacking squad players. We probably do need to uh, strengthen in that area. Chalfo winning again. And Hungerford are still drawing, I think. I can't see them. I will look for them in a second after I've completed my final substitution. Um, and that substitution is going to be Alderson on for Daredevil. And we will just swap them around, play them like that, and get Larson back into the, the defence where he's supposed to be. And can anyone see Hungerford anywhere? I can't remember if they were playing home or away. Um, Hungerford? Might just be, oh, there you go, they're 3-0 up. So it is going to remain a four-point gap, but at least we haven't let them get further away from us. And remember, we do still play them, albeit away from home on the last day. So if we can just close that gap down to two points or less, then we are still leaving ourselves a chance come the final day. We'd obviously like to go on another winning run and have it wrapped up before the final day so that we don't have to go to their place and win. But I imagine the league are lick, licking their lips about a potential uh, championship playoff on the final day with the trophy in attendance and no idea who's going to be lifting it. But that, after a disappointment against Chalfo, is a good result. 
We are still in a title race. And if you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.